Disney, you okay? You okay there, Disney? You're, you're not looking so good. You, you, you've been vomiting up some uh, concerning stuff, you know, it's, it's the stuff that you had, you know, in your body, and uh, it's coming up not so good, you, you know, with your Mary Poppins Returns, and your Captain Marvel, and your, um, your Aladdin. It's, uh... Right on the, the, the high point of, of your Beauty and the Beast remake, and your Jungle Book remake, and your Sleeping Beauty remake, and Dumbo remake, and... Got Lion King coming up too, and I'm sure Jungle Book 2 and Maleficent too, it's uh... But at least Pixar is doing a good job with your Toy Story 4. Doing okay, Disney? You doing alright? You had your end game. That's, that's good. You doing okay, Disney? <laughs> this was bad. <laughs> this was really bad. Uh, I, I can't even believe I'm saying this, but um, if you thought the Beauty and the Beast remake was bad, this technically is worse. <laughs> uh, it didn't anger me as much because cause I love the original Beauty and the Beast. I really like Aladdin. Uh, when I was a kid, I, I, it was my favorite animated Disney movie. Uh, I absolutely loved it. And when I got older, I was like, oh, okay, I, um, I really like this. I, like, I, there's a lot to appreciate and a lot to enjoy. There's this incredible energy and it looks amazing. Uh, you know, but it's a little more, the characters are kind of Gen X-ish and, and, and some of the jokes are like, eh, actually the jokes are pretty good. Um, but it, it, it felt like it didn't quite have the substance of something like Fantasia or Beauty and the Beast or Dumbo or something like that. Like a lot of the stuff I look back, I'm like, okay, like that had weight to it. These movies had weight. Or Aladdin is a ton of fun and really cool and super funny, you know, but, but there's, there's not much weight to it, which is fine. You need that. You need to mix it up. Uh, but I still, I, I loved back then and I love now the spectacle of it. Uh, it seemed like from Little Mermaid on... It probably to uh, to Lion King. Uh, they kept upping the spectacle with their animated films, and and Aladdin. I mean, that's the one before Lion King. I mean, before like the big spectacle opus. So so Aladdin looks great, and it has this incredible momentum, and of course this wonderful humor, and the colors are just amazing. I mean, it's just one of those wow animated films. Um, and this one is not. Uh, it just oh. All right, so let me say the positives. I I think there's two. Um, the orchestrating, the orchestration of the songs is actually, in my opinion, better. And that's saying something, because the orchestrations of the original Aladdin songs are really friggin' great. Uh, I, maybe because I saw it on IMAX and, and 3D and the sound is really great, but, like, these songs, like, I, I mean, the, the, the singing's kind of hit and miss. I mean, it, it's not Beauty and the Beast remake bad, don't worry, but, you know, they're kind of hit and miss. But the, uh, the orchestration, like, like, just sounded great. Uh, so, so that's really saying something, because the first Aladdin had great orchestrations. Um, God, it's gotta be something else. Um... I think that's it. <laughs> I can't think of anything else that's better than the animated one. Uh, oh, you know what? Uh, the woman who played Jasmine, uh, I, I thought she did a really good job. Like, to me, this is someone that's like, even though she's not written that well, big shock, nobody's written that well, but uh, she had like, I don't know, just this passion to her performance and she had this charm and, and she looked wonderful and she had this, uh, good enough singing voice. Uh, you could tell they had to auto-tune it, but like, again, everybody's auto-tuned. Uh, the dude that got to play Aladdin looks like almost exactly like him and sounds almost exactly like him. Like, it's kind of eerie. Uh, need a little bit more, a little bit more charm in there. Like, I don't know. There, there should have been a, should have been a few more takes, like, like a take two or something. Like, like, try it like this. Try it a little bit more jokey. Try it. Yeah, let's talk about the jokes. Oh my god. Oh, this movie's not funny. It's just not funny. And, and, and like, the humor is just, I guess it's supposed to be, like, awkward humor, I guess? Like, there's a running joke about jam. Like, that's it. 
They're like, well, what'd you bring me, Prince Ali? I brought you jams. So many jams. And they just keep bringing it up that he brought jams. Get it? I don't. Jams. <laughs> Will Smith is just dying. He is just dying in this role. And again, you. Okay, here's the thing. Will Smith is a charming dude. He he's just this smooth, awesome guy. But he's smooth and awesome when he's with people. When he has to be on his own, and not just on his own, but he has to like be in this weird CG body that does it. That kind of moves like the Casper CGI ghost from the movie Casper. And like, like remember how they move where they're they're talking right here, and then suddenly right here, and then they're back right here, and they're always moving a little wonky, and then just sudden close up for no reason. It's like all that, just throughout most of it, and. uh... Yeah, like there's just a million scenes where he's just kind of saying stuff and you're kind of like, is that a joke? What, what, was that was that funny? <laughs> like, there's so many scenes where I'm kind of saying that. The only, uh, top of my head, the only joke I could think that legit worked was, uh, I, I think Jafar also horribly cast. Um, actually, the casting in this isn't like awful, awful, uh, but, but Jafar is just like, just pick a random guy from the street and that's Jafar. <laughs> like, he has no presence whatsoever, but he did have this one line I like, is that um, uh, he has, like, the, the only backstory to give him at all is that he used to be a thief, too, which is kind of like, alright, that's kind of cool. Uh, and he tells Aladdin, he says, you know, you steal an apple, you're a thief. You steal a kingdom, you're a statesman. I'm like, I like that. that, that that's a good line. Uh... I'm trying to think, like, just any other positives, man. I mean, it's like, I, I like that the, when he turns into a prince, they say uh, the genie powers include that nobody can recognize you. It's like, okay, that explains that, because that's something in the original made no sense. He has a hat. Who is he? You know, it's like the Clark Kent glasses, you know, suddenly he's somebody else. Um, but, yeah, a lot of it is just like the Beauty and the Beast remake where they just move some things around for seemingly no reason. Uh, like, oh, well, now this happens at this scene, and now, before you even know Jasmine is a princess, she's, you know, on the street, you know, looking uh, uh, for food, and, and Aladdin comes and stops her hand from getting chopped off, whatever. It's like that, they just switch around like that happens before you know she's the princess in the palace, and it's like, but, but so what? And, you know, they add one or two little things, which is, like, kind of seems pointless. And whenever they get to a line that's said from the movie, you know, like, do you trust me or something like that, like a lot of these famous lines, all you're thinking is, man, that had, that had more of an impact when I saw it the first time, because there was just, you even feel like they're saying these lines and doing these things just because, well, it was in the first one. Uh, the, the climax... Remember the giant snake? Remember, like, he's, he's got these knives flying around, it's a giant hourglass, and, and the genie's kind of cheering him on, and then, like, he, he's got to jump out, and, and Abu is turned into this little toy. The genie turns Abu into a toy at one point, like, he's the villain almost, uh, in the middle of this song, and, and uh, the carpet unravels, like, like it's, all, it's all red, and it's dark, and lightning, and it's crazy. Uh, this one has a big parrot. Spoiler, that's that's the climax, and you get you know, giant snake, giant parrot, upgrade. What are you doing, Disney? What are you doing? Oh boy, um, yeah, they they try to add, they add an additional song. It's it's kind of forgettable. It's kind of like the girl power song, I guess, and it's. It's, <laughs> you could cut it from the movie and not miss a thing. They try to play up, you know, they try to give Jasmine, I guess, a little bit more of a character, which, I mean, like, I feel like the original was fine, but again, just change something, God, you know, I'll take it. Uh, and they have this whole thing, I won't be silent, I won't be silent, like, that's kind of the song. And, you know, and she, she sings, the, you have a hint of it earlier, and then she sings it big time, like, in, uh, uh later in the film. And it's, all I could think of is that, you know, following this scene, she uses diplomacy to kind of make a scene 
better. She doesn't really save the day or anything, uh, but it's, again, it's the, I won't be silent, I won't be silent, and, and cool, she, you know, there, there's actually a little talk about, like, politics, about how to rule, which I'm kind of okay with, because, like, you think, like, Princess Diary is like, no, you have to know how to walk like a princess and hold a fan like a princess. It's like, how about ruling a goddamn kingdom? Like, they, they do talk about that a little bit, um, and I'm kind of like, all right, cool, like, that, that's okay, um, and I feel like they, some of the talks, I'm like, why are we talking about this? Like, about invading other kingdoms and stuff. But, I mean, there is a part of me, I'm just like, just because I never see that in, like, a, a Disney films, you know, when it's a princess, yeah, you wear pretty clothes, or you want more, or I don't want to be told what to do. It's like, well, what do you want to do? You know, it's like, I like that this one is actually like, no, you, you, you want power, you want to take control, it takes some responsibility in being a leader, but not like a leader of your friends, like a leader of a kingdom, you know, like, um, and it isn't just like, just be nice to commoners, you know, it's like there's, I, I kind of dig that a little bit, even though, like, they don't, they don't do a ton with it, but they tap on just enough where I'm kind of like, all right, you know, but that's more just because I don't see it, like, in Disney films, like, it's, it's not interesting, <laughs> like, they don't make it that much fun or cool or anything, um, yeah, yeah, anything else? Like, that's actually good. Is, oh, you know what? I, I'll, I'll, I'll give it some cred. I'll give it some cred. Uh, the Friend Like Me song is actually okay. Uh, it's one of the few moments where there's some really cool visuals. They uh, have some fun with the camera and the colors and stuff like that to a point where when it was wrapping up, I actually kind of felt bad it was wrapping up. I was like, oh, I was actually kind of getting into this, you know. So, uh, and again, the orchestrations uh, were good. The only song that's just a complete bomb. Like, wow, did that do nothing. It's like my favorite song in Aladdin is Prince Ali. And you've probably seen clips of it on YouTube. It's like one of the little previews they had. It does not get any better after that. <laughs> and that's like the one scene where you can... Uh, okay, so in the credits... They have, uh, they have a little dance number of just everybody dancing. It's really well put together, and, and I think it's done, like, in one shot and everything, and it's like, that was really cool, because that's all, like, I think they speed it up sometimes or something like that, but, like, it's still these people really there doing this dance number. It looks like the guy who plays Aladdin is a good dancer. Actually, the one who played Jasmine, if, if I saw it right, I mean, it looks like a good dancer, unless they CG their head on there or something like that, which... If so, that's good CG artist, but somebody's a good dancer. There's some good dancers in this, whoever they are, whether it's really the people or they're cg or whatever, but there are good dancers. And, like, the Prince Ali song is where, like, you can do that. You can just have fun with these people coming out. I mean, make it like Portobello Road from Bed Nods and Broomsticks. Just, like, this unbelievable thing, but it's just Will Smith and the dude playing Aladdin just standing there going... Like that, you're like, like, Will Smith's like this, and Aladdin's like this, and it's like, that's it. <laughs> it's like, you could have done so much with that. What, what, you wait for the credits to pull out the big dance sequence? Um, so, yeah, it, it's another one of those unfortunate situations where a lot of it is kept the same unless they switch it around. The stuff they add... Uh, like, I, I don't remember being awful or anything, like, but, but it's not much. I, I mean, they just do not add that much. And because it just feels so much like, well, we have to just hit these notes, uh, it, it feels like there's no momentum to it. Like, scenes just kind of, they either drag on forever or they're way too quick, and you never feel like any of the emotion you're supposed to feel for these characters or any of the comedy. Like, it, it just so drags. It just feels like it goes on forever. And, I, I mean, granted, I didn't see this with... I, I saw it pretty late at night. I mean, so the crowd was, you know... I, I mean, there was probably something like 20, 30 people in there or something like that. And some of them were kids. And it was just dead silent. <laughs> uh, I don't know how this is going to play for kids. Uh, I mean, it's still Will Smith, Blue, you know, and he's they're moving like the Casper characters like this sometimes. And that could get them going, ha, <laughs> ha. So I don't know. Um, I, I mean, my guess would be they would nah. Uh, kids really like Will Smith still, so I mean, like it, it, it might play okay for kids. Um, but yeah, my guess is just a lot of kids are gonna be like, 
Yeah, can we just put on the cartoon again? <laughs> the cartoon had such life, such energy. I mean, it was another one of those movies where it just feels like it leaps off the screen. This one just feels like it's draining the life from you. I, I mean, it's just so odd in how... And just how lifeless it feels. I mean, even though, like, you know, sometimes there's some nice visuals and some nice colors and stuff like that, but it just feels just so lifeless. Um, man, yeah. It's, I'm sorry, like, I feel drained watching this movie. I just feel like I just watched, like, it, it's not a whole bunch of nothing in that, oh, I just looked at a blank screen, but it's like it had just enough little splash of color you know, occasionally like a nice sounding song and then just a whole bunch of nothing. So it's, it's like, what do you say about that? Well, here, here's some nothing and occasional color, occasional song. Actually, I guess I just said it. Um, I feel like this movie made me dumb. <laughs> I'll say this as well. The, where Beauty and the Beast legit made me like angry mad. Like, oh my God, this is just so infuriating. This is kind of so bad, it's funny. Some of the comedic routines are just so painful. And you can tell they're just trying to improvise a little bit or, or maybe like we're, we're trying to make what was written here funny and it's just not working. And they're just so trying to make it work and it's just not. Um, you know, and I feel like I feel like a lot of that's got to be... Maybe it's not the direction. Although, I mean, who is it? Guy Ritchie? He directed a good film and a half. Uh, that, that's about the extent <laughs> I can give him. I liked, I liked uh, Lock, Shock, and, uh, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, and then Snatch was just another one of those without the charm. But, but, but I, I like lock stock so much that it's like well snatch I, I give a little bit of a pass because i like the first one so much. i just like that style uh and then like he's never done anything else good <laughs> as far as i know unless i'm missing something but every other movie that's like come out afterwards i mean everyone's just been oh yeah that sucked oh that was terrible yeah. oh no 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 sherlock holmes that was good i forgot about that he did he did a good sherlock holmes okay that's uh that's two and a half okay give him credit for that um Maybe I'm missing another one, too, but uh, he's not someone that's, like, on my radar of, like, ooh, a Guy Ritchie film, you know, kind of thing. Um, but, yeah, I, I just feel like if they could have... Okay, you never know what the schedule's on these movies. I mean, if they just had more time to create more charisma with, with the people and the characters, but, I mean, but they're not... They're not given much to work with, either. I mean, these are just very obvious bland lines when they're not just taking it from the first film and the stuff that's added is very generic stuff that's added i mean like you know okay well well jasmine's gonna stand up for herself I, we haven't seen that that's her character you know but but again like i felt like that actress kind of brought a little something to it like she made it almost charming like almost work where i'm like okay like, i want to see her in something else uh, you know, even the guy who played Aladdin, like, like he had a good look, and, and he had, like, a, a good voice, he could, if that's really him dancing and everything, like, he can move, I, I mean, like, he, you can see a career for this dude, but yeah, it's like, you just need, you need someone to steer you in a, a better direction, you need, or, or a better writer, or just something, you just, you need love! All you need is love. <laughs> this just feels like a paycheck. This just feels like, oh, well, these worked. Beauty and the Beast was a hit. You know, Mary Poppins Returns did good. I mean, we, we didn't have to put much new into that. Just do it again. Paycheck. <laughs> you know, but where, where these kind of movies, I understand, you know, I can understand one or two of these. Just like, okay, get that out. So we can fund these, you know, like these cool things that Disney used to make. Like, I just feel like they're not making those anymore. Like, I, I mean, I guess they still have Marvel. I mean, that like an end game was good. But like I said, even, you know, Captain Marvel sure wasn't that great. And, and now they have Fox. I mean, maybe they can do something with that. But uh, yeah, Star Wars now I'm, I'm just getting tired of too. I mean, so I don't know. Um... They better whip something out that that's pretty cool, because I feel like I'm, like... Disney always, I feel like they hit that slump for a while, and, like, they always have, even in the 60s and 50s, like, you know, like, there's always kind of that slump they start to hit where they'll recycle a lot of stuff, or they'll just kind of, 
you know, exploit what's popular at the time, you know, like, like if you look at some of their teen films from like the 50s and 60s like like there's some good ones don't get me wrong but but there's some crap too and i just feel like man we're we're, we're just we're coming up on that slump again I, I just hope they can get some just good imaginative stuff again like fresh stuff yeah i mean the freshest thing they got coming out is frozen 2 and that's still a sequel <laughs> you know i mean I don't know, and I know technically everything's always based on, like, a fairy tale and stuff like that, or famous uh, books and such, but I, I don't know, they gave it a, a new spin, you know, like, like Snow White, I mean, like, everyone knew the story of Snow White, but when you talk about the Disney Snow White, you know what they're talking about, you know the look of it, you know the characters, you know the names, you, you know the style, you know the environment, where, I mean, if you were to say, Aladdin, well, yeah, the animated one. No, the remake. Um, well, Will Smith, right? Like, like, that's probably all people are gonna say about it. Just Will Smith was in it. I know that. So, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I'm missing that Disney that can stand out. You know, it's just, it's all blurring together now. Star Wars is blurring together. You know, Marvel had Endgame, so it's like, that's cool. Like, like that was a, yeah, that was kind of like a big step. Even though I, I, I didn't love all of it or anything, I'm still like that, but that's a step. That, that's kind of a risk. They, they, they did some interesting creative things with that, where, where this just feels like, I don't know. I, I hope that I can get things like just the creative juices going again, because man, if there's just more of these, like... Ah, uh, I, I, I just want that uniqueness back. I want that freshness back. And I just feel like I'm not getting that right now. At least not from their movies. Uh, maybe from their, maybe from their theme parks are still doing good. Maybe from their TV shows. Uh, here, Star vs. The Force of Evil is very good, you know. So, like, maybe I gotta go there. But, yeah, their movies recently, man, I it have not been hitting out of the park for me. So... Uh, hopefully more stuff will be coming. I'm sorry, it's turned more into, like, a Disney rant than a Aladdin rant. But that's what this movie does! Just, we're done! I'm mad as hell! I'm not gonna take it anymore with these Disney reboots. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, if, if you have little kids, um, and they want to see it, if they see the trailer and they want to see it, it it's... It's fine. I, I mean, I guess, like, they can watch it and just be like, well, okay, I... I my assumption is they're gonna have kind of a blank face <laughs> throughout most of it, but, like, they will be quiet. <laughs> if that makes sense. It, it, it's a totally decent shut-up movie. <laughs> just to place your kids in front of it. It's like, okay, I just... I need a break. Kids, watch this, you know. But if you're looking for something to, like really like enchant and delight and awaken the imagination and man I, I i did not see that here and then maybe some other people will some other kids but i i missed all of that so uh yeah uh, like i said i i hate beauty and the beast the reboot more uh because i really love that movie but because also going in i think everybody knows this is just kind of gonna suck like it, it, only the people that saw the trailers and went "Ooh!" it's like it's more of that but like most of the people i've seen are just like man that looks stupid this feels like the year of movies that don't feel real you got aladdin you got dora the explorer you got sonic the hedgehog Toy Story 4. <laughs> we, we gotta make Sporky realize he's a toy. <laughs> like, doesn't it just feel like that? Like, it just feels like these aren't real movies that we're getting. Um, the Emperor's back in Star Wars. <laughs> so, I don't know. Uh... It, it, it didn't win me over. I, I didn't see uh, anything new to it that was exciting. Um, I, I, it just seemed like rehash, a, a very boring rehash. So that's my take. Um, I, I, again, if you saw the trailer, you're like, that might, like, this looks like, this looks cute. This looks fun. Uh, you'll probably get that. You'll get the trailer. It really is like everyone that said, oh, that trailer looks so stupid and nothing. Will Smith looks, you know, ugly and weird and stuff like that. I mean, that's what you're going to think of the movie. If you look at it, you're like, oh, it's turn my brain off. Just go have fun. Wee! I know that song. Fair enough. Like, there's, there's crap I see where I'm just like, I, I kind of want to do that too. But uh, yeah, this wasn't the one for me. So, um... That's about it. I'll see you at uh, the next awful Disney reboot. Or maybe it'll be good. Uh, it'll be awful. Bye. <laughs>